no payday is worth seeing seeing somebody else suffering and dying because of the job you're doing. No payday is worth that. My name is Chuck Nelson. I'm a, I'm a disabled underground coal miner. I was for 30 years. And right now I'm, uh, I work for uh, Keepers of the Mountains Foundation located in Charleston. I've decided to come up here and uh, join this rally in solidarity. The people in West Virginia, you know, want to share their solidarity because uh, we're a part of the problem. Uh, the coal mine, a lot of the coal mine in West Virginia has shipped up here. Uh, you know, we're on the front lines at West Virginia too, uh, fighting our politicians, uh, fighting the coal companies, fighting the coal miners. Um, that you know, it's 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 a full-time job, just trying to the end mountaintop removal, strip mining, uh, which is now called mountaintop removal mining. That's the elimination of the entire top of the mountain and the destruction of communities, the impacts of health on people, the amount of people that's having cancers, uh, and and the, the 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 young kids having defects because of. of of coal in our area. Uh, the days of tunneling in the mines, how people used to go underground to mine the coal, uh, there's still a few mines that do that, uh, and but most of them transitioned and got away from that and went to mountaintop renewable mining. The simple fact is it maximizes the industry's profit. And you know, when I worked, I, I'm an underground coal miner. I worked 30 years in underground coal mines. And, um, and when I worked in the 70s and 80s, we had 130,000 coal miners in West Virginia. Now the company claims that they're creating jobs by opening up mountaintop removal sites. Well, now, you know, when we had 130,000 coal miners in the 70s and 80s, today we have less than 17,000 coal miners in West Virginia and they're producing just as much coal as we did in the 70s and 80s because of the practice of mountaintop removal. It's a lot easier to blow the top of the mountain off, get down to the, the seam of coal, and just constantly load, uh, continuous loading of the seam of coal because the seam of coal lays in the mountain like a layer, like a cake. Uh, like, just think of it as like a layer of cake. And you know, some of the overburden the, the, the topsoil, you know, all the shell rock and stuff to get down to the coal seam is shoved over into the valleys. Now this, you know, this is waste. This is considered waste. But in 2001, George Bush changed that. You know, he changed the Clean Water Act. It used to be that you couldn't dump any waste in any stream in, in, any, in any stream in the United States. It was against the law. But what he did, he went in and he redefined that as fill, where you're allowed to put fill in streams to build highways, bridges and stuff, interstates, stuff like that. That's what opened the door for mountaintop removal to allow them to dump all this waste over into our streams, our headwater streams. And they already buried over 2,000 miles of streams. And with all the heavy metals that coming out of these mountaintop removal sites, it's locked in these mountains and the heavy metals don't do damage unless they're exposed to the, to the elements of the atmosphere. Well, with them exposed and blowing up the mountains and shoving them over the hills, you have all these heavy metals now being dumped into our headwater streams. And it continues downstream to where all our waterways are contaminated with aluminum, with cadmium, barium, arsenic, uh, selenium, you name it. I mean, all these heavy metals are, are filling our head streams up with, and everything flows downstream. I mean, the whole East Coast depends on the Appalachian Mountain to get their water system. I mean, that's the, when God created the Appalachian Mountains, it was just like he scrunched the mountains in order to make drains and waterways to, to feed the, the East Coast with the water supply. And uh, with them dumping all this waste into these headwater streams, that contamination is going to flow downstream. Everything flows downstream. 
You know, now we have people that were on well water that, you know, has to be on uh, kidney dialysis machine. Uh, and some of them has to take 20 to 30 pills a day uh, because their body filled with heavy metals. Uh, they was drinking from well water that had been contaminated with coal waste and, and didn't even know it until, you know, uh, the, the water turned bad. The water looked like coffee. That's when they first found out that they was having water problems, but the contamination happens way before that. That there's 23,000 Americans die each year from the from the impacts of coal-fired power plants, Just from the respiratory uh, illnesses, uh, premature respiratory illnesses that people have, uh, that it kills 23,000 Americans each year. And you know this is this is not posted on your local newspaper. Uh, you won't see it. I mean, as bad as the Trade Center was with 3,000 people that got killed, a horrible tragedy. You still see that happening in the paper. Here we're talking about 23,000 Americans dying each year, year after year after year after year. And you don't see that on the front page of any newspaper across the country. Um, and, you know, also that um, Another impact of coal-fired power plants is that it causes 640,000 birth defects each year because the mercury that comes out of these same coal-fired power plants and goes into our waterways and, and uh, it's almost unsafe to eat any fish anywhere anymore. But, you know, one out of every five women have so much mercury in, in their body that their uh, your child will have birth defects. It's not maybe they'll have birth defects. They will have birth defects in autism, blindness, kidney, liver disease. It wasn't like the coal companies or the politicians give them advance notice that, well, hey, we're gonna start doing this. You know, it, they just done it on their own. And, uh, you know, the, the Department of Environmental Protection Agency, our regulatory agency that's supposed to be protecting communities, uh, they haven't done their job in the last 30 years. They're just spokesperson for the coal industry. They issue permits, and they can get these permits through the mail. Just fill in, you know, send in applications, you get your permit back. That's how our DEP works, and they're supposed to be protecting the communities uh, uh, throughout the coal field, throughout the whole entire state. But this is, the, this is Governor Tomlin's agency. It used to be Governor Manchin, which is now Senator Manchin. Um, he was the daddy of all this. And then Tomlin just, you know, he's like a puppet. Manchin's still calling in the strings about, you know, what's happening within the state. But uh, Tomlin is just like a puppet to him. He grew up in Logan County. That's a big coal producing county. Uh, all our politicians are owned by the coal industry. Uh, the West Virginia Coal Association has a daily presence in our capital to make sure that these delegates and senators are ruling in their favor with sacks of money that they hand to them for campaign contributions. I mean, that's, that's the way our state runs. And even Don Blankenship, who was CEO for Massey Energy, and I worked for Massey for a while, so I know what it's like working for Massey Energy. You work without any ventilation, you work without any air, you work without any water, you don't have lunch breaks, you work, you have a starting time, you don't have a quitting time. You go home when they tell you. It gives you great Christmas gifts, though. Huh? It gives you great Christmas gifts. Yeah, yeah, he gives us great Christmas gifts. But if, and y'all may have seen, it was on the NBC Nightly News several years ago, where um, it was a, a, a company, Caperton, was, was filing lawsuit against Massey Energy for not filling the order, coal orders. Okay, um, we had a, a Chief Supreme Court Justice of West Virginia called Spike Maynard was sitting on, I mean, he was sitting on this case, he was Chief Supreme Justice. And come to find out, we caught footage of him and Don Blankenship. Why the, the case was still pending, him and Don Blankenship in the French Riviera, uh, partying and vacationing over in the French Riviera. I mean, this, this is how 
the politics goes in West Virginia, and it don't get no dirty. When you know coal barons buy off chief Supreme Court justices in order for them to rule in their favors. So this this is typical politics in West Virginia. So when we stand up against the coal industry, we're standing up against uh, uh, the politicians, the regulatory agencies. The coal miners who's been preached that we're taking their jobs. I've been beat up several times by coal miners uh, because they look at me like, well, you was a coal miner yourself and you're trying to take my job. No, I'm not trying to take your job. I'm saying that, you know, we got some serious problems here uh, in our community. Uh, first, coal is a finite resource and we're running out of coal. Another thing is climate crisis. We have to address the climate crisis and we can't keep burning coal. That has to stop. You know, what does our, our children and their children, what kind of future are they going to have if, if things stay the way they are? So that's why I'm up here this weekend in support to shut down yet another coal-fired power plant, uh, which I think all of them should be took offline. And gradually they are being took offline. And a lot of them switching over to natural gas. Um, Natural gas is just a bridge. It's to get us to where we need to go. It's not a permanent fix. It's 50% cleaner, but we need an energy policy that has zero emissions. Uh, so that, you know, our, our, our kids and their kids, uh, and I know y'all guys have grandkids, uh, you wonder about what their, the world's gonna be like, what their kids are gonna be like, you know. A person has to wonder. I mean, we're in, we're in big trouble. Uh, the CO right now, the CO2 emissions is over 400 parts per million right now. And that's a number that the scientists didn't want to see happen. So it's urgent that we stop burning coal as fast as we can and switch over to renewable energy. And it's, and it's not alternative, alternative energy like a lot, a lot of people like to call it. It's the next thing. You know, and with all the technology we got, we can find a way to to produce electricity clean, without any emissions, without making any people sick, but the, nobody's payday is worth uh, somebody down the road that lives below this power plant having cancer, uh, having a family member die, or a child being born with birth defects. No one deserves it. And uh, it's time that you know we phase out the coal. I mean, it's a, it's a dinosaur fuel that we've been on for 130 years. You know, we don't want to see, you know, it's, it's bad to see anybody lose a job, but they could put a renewable factory in right there and put those guys right back to work if they really wanted to. And that's what we'd like to see. Uh, you know, we'd like to see a sustainable community. Right now, it's not sustainable. When you've got people dying left and right because of the emissions from these coal-fired power plants. We do care about the workers, we care about their jobs, we know what they're up against, but no payday is worth seeing, seeing somebody else suffering and dying because of the job you're doing. No payday is worth that. It's every week that they're shutting coal mines down and laying off coal miners back in the coal fields. Uh, this is a decline that's not going to reverse. You know, a lot of people say the boom and bust of the coal cycle, this, this, this boom, this bust here ain't gonna come back. You know, it's, it, it's permanent. And it's, it's hard for an area like where I live at, where coal is a mono economy. You know, that's, that's what we are, a mono economy state. And they put all their baskets and they put all their eggs in one basket, betting it all on coal. And it's been this way for way too long. Uh, and they haven't prepared and, you know, Senator Byrd, Right before he passed away, he started understanding the problem. He, already, he started to understand. He's been a big coal supporter in the past. But he told, he told the coal industry right before he passed, hey, there's changing times are coming. Either West Virginia can adjust by them and uh, you know, stay up with the changes, or they can bury their heads in the sand. The choice is up to them. And more or less, he was sending the message you know, that the coal industry, how brutal they are, uh, to the people that lives in the communities, uh, to the workers, um, and the, 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 ex the mine explosion that killed the 29 guys just brought everything to, to the spotlight, you know, of how coal miners are being treated 
and these non-union coal companies. And I worked 21 years union, and I worked eight years non-union. And I can tell you, it's it's all the difference in the world. Somebody says, well, what is, what is it like? And the best way I can say it, it's just like day and night. It's that much of a difference. You know, you go from, from being uh, a, min a miner that respects safety and does his job in a safe manner to a miner who takes orders from somebody that's standing over top of you. Either you do it my way or you go home. That's the choices you got. And, uh, you know, th this wouldn't never happen if, if, if this was a union mines. But when Massey come in there, they had intentions of busting the union. And that's exactly what they did. And they controlled that whole river until this explosion happened. I mean, they had control of everything, the politics in West Virginia and everything. But now they sold out to Alpha, Alpha National Resources, which is uh, not, not much of a better company than what Massey Energy, but, you know, Massey Energy, that's as dirty as it gets. Uh, you know, with the CEO they had in Don Blankenship. And I know technology can do a lot better job than that, it's just that they haven't been allowed to because the lobbyists that's on Capitol Hill uh, talking to, you know, lobbying for the gas, the coal, and the oil industry, and the fossil fuel industry uh, all together. And, you know, they pay big money to, the, you know, the contributions to these politicians. So we had to break that cycle. Uh, you know, uh, they don't add in all those external factors. And people need to realize that, you know, they are connected to what what's happening in West Virginia. They're, they're connected to what's happening here in Somerset. And anywhere that coal is generated by a coal-fired power plant, people are connected to what's happening all over the country. Um, what people think of when they turn, flip that switch? Can you say a couple words of two people, like what they should be thinking when they're flipping that switch? Yeah, I mean, and it's like, you know, some people kind of try to disconnect ourselves from the problem, you know, saying, well, you know, that's somebody else's problem. No, it's not. Everybody's connected. Whenever you flip that light switch on and your power is produced by coal-fired uh, power plants, and then you're connected to the problem. Uh, you need to stop and think, you know, how many people really stop and ever thinks about where their electricity comes from? Uh, and, you know, a lot, a lot of times the, the the coal association and the utilities say, well, coal's a, a cheap form of energy. It's the cheap, cheapest form of energy. And, uh, but what they're doing, they're not adding in all the external costs. You know, the people getting sick, the people that's getting cancer, the people that's dying, their medical bills. They don't add in all of that, the, 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 the destroying the water. You know, the people's got to stand up, and, and it's, it's, it's up to the people to, to change. You know, the politicians are not going to do it. You know, it's up to the people that, that's going to have to make the change. And hopefully, starting tomorrow, that there'll be a change at this coal-fired power plant. Are you going to, are you going to take a stand? Uh, are you going to fight for a better future for your kids? Or are you, not, are you going to sit down and not do nothing? And uh, I've chose the, the, the path to be an activist, to get out there. And I might not see it in my lifetime, but you know, I've got grandkids that I want to see their future secure. And I'm going to do all I can do.
but no payday is worth seeing seeing somebody else suffering and dying because of the job you're doing. No payday is worth that.